if there's one idea that I see a lot in scripture it is over and over again God seems to say don't give up keep on persevere stick it out have faith trust in him wait on him let him do it you know when I read things like that that encourages me because you see I wouldn't be a Christian if I thought I had it all together because if I thought it, I had it all together I'd run off and do my own thing I you know act like I was in charge and that I knew better than anybody else and I could figure everything out but you see I kind of learned pretty young that guess what most of what people thought they knew they really didn't know <laughs> And I found out very quickly in business, most people that were in charge didn't have a clue what was going on, especially in their own business. They usually assembled a team, you know, and had this kind of networking idea that if they knew how to put the right people in the right places to do the right thing, then they could get, you know, things done. And if they were an organizer, then they were usually given credit for putting things together. Well, I slowly but surely found out that sometimes there were people not in charge that were probably more in charge than those that were in charge. So when I got saved, I began to realize, you know, the pastors really don't know what they're doing. God inspires them. The elders really aren't old. They're just people letting God do what he does. I began to realize that, you know, all I needed to do was to kind of like read study and let the Holy Spirit teach me and as I began to understand that I became friends with pastors and elders and deacons and you know prophets and teachers and all these other people and I began to realize they're just normal people too like you and I you know that I'm just like you and you're just like me we're all sinners saved by grace so for me later in life when I saw you know typical men and women fail or fall I wasn't surprised I would be probably more merciful to them than anybody else because I figured, hey, they're the ones that are like the big target out there. They got a big bullseye on them, you know, so people always take pot shots at them, you know, kind of like throw out some kind of barb or critical spirit or kind of, you know, act like, well, you know, the pastor said or the teacher said or the minister or the prophet or the, the priest or the rabbi. Well, I began to realize, you know, what did Jesus say? And you know, every time that I went back to what Jesus said, nobody could argue. Because what Jesus said, he did. And what Jesus did, he lived. And when Jesus lived it, there wasn't much that could be said about it, except to do it. And that's kind of where I've been at, you know, like I, I read what Jesus said and I typically tell people, hey, you read it, you figure it out, but whatsoever God tells you to do, that's probably what you should do. The life of the flesh is in the blood, and I have given it to you upon the altar to make an atonement for your souls, for it is the blood that makes an atonement for the soul. Behold, the Lamb of God, which takes away the sin of the world, the blood of the Lamb, the precious blood of Jesus as of a lamb without blemish and without spot. Without the shedding of blood is no remission. The blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all sin. By his own blood he entered in once into the holy place, having obtained eternal redemption for us. Having therefore, brethren, boldness to enter into the holiest by the blood of Jesus by a new and living way, which he has consecrated for us through the veil, that is to say, his flesh, let us draw near with a true heart in full assurance of faith. You are bought with a price. Therefore, glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. You know, it is interesting that people forget that. I'm not my own. God bought me with a price. He paid, literally, with his son's life with his son's blood. If, excuse me, if I am forgiven, 
then it's by the blood of Jesus Christ. So that means that he paid for me. And I am bought now by God. And my flesh and my spirit and my soul are his. Now, before that, I don't know if you realize this, but you were a child of Satan. Yeah, you. We were already bought and paid for before we were even born. That sucked. Because you were born in sin, you were conceived in sin, and you were going to die in sin. But you see, God decided to save you from sin. He decided to purchase you from you know, the auction block where you weren't worth anything, but to God you were worth everything. But Satan was going to destroy you in any in every by any means with which he could possibly do it. So he just wanted to kind of like use you and abuse you, but God said, No, I'm going to confuse the use that Satan may have wanted to do or to destroy what I'm doing, and I'm going to blow his mind by using someone like you. So I'm going to buy you. I'm going to clean you up. I'm going to fix you. I'm going to rearrange you. I'm going to give you a new spirit, a new heart. I'm going to take those parts that don't work right and make them work right. As a matter of fact, I'm going to surprise you by how much I can do because I'm God and Satan's not. I'm God and you're not. As a matter of fact, I'm God and I can do whatever I want to. <laughs> so you see, you could go out of your way to kind of like play the game of being a god, acting like a god, or being abused by a quote-unquote god of his own making, but you could turn your life over, or your will, actually, to God because he's going to accomplish his purposes anyways. And what he really has in store for you is the best that you could be. Now. I know you think you got your own, you know, workout program and you think that you're cruising along, you know, because if you're in your 20s, you think you know it all or maybe you don't, but you think that you kind of like look good, feel good and act good, you know. <laughs> you know, we've all been there, but when you get older, you realize, you know what? I wasn't so smart after all because you kind of see the consequences of your actions. But God can take all of your life from beginning when you were a little baby to end when you'll die from the flesh to eternity, ages to ages life, where you're going to age from age to age to age to age in a never-ending, constant changing, rearranging and newness of life for eternity, because that's what eternity means. It doesn't mean that you just kind of like, you know, sit around, you know, on some cloud, you know, strumming some harp, you know, and saying, oh, it's eternity, or that time disappears so you feel like it was eternity, because I've had those thoughts philosophically and scientifically. If time ended, that would be eternity. But, you see, God didn't use the word eternity in the English way of saying it. He used it in the Hebrew way of saying it, which means ages to 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 life. That means that in every age, like, you know, how we call this the church age, you know, and then there's kind of like the millennial age, you know, well, there's going to be another age and 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 another age. So that in each one of those, there's something knew about God that he's doing. Now, we'll never repeat having to go through sin, but we will discover and realize more about God than we ever dreamed of before. You see, that's where a lot of these people that got this whole idea of kind of like, you know, reincarnation, they kind of got a little confused. They got kind of like um, messed up, you know, in their thinking because even though they kind of got the idea that they were going to live after death, they kind of wanted to put you in a hamster cage and keep repeating the same cycle over again until you learn things. No. You know, that's just man's idea of having a nice little hamster cage. And if you like hamster cages, well, then I'd say go believe in reincarnation. But you see, God who exists in eternity could tell us about what it's like by sending his son who came and revealed to us what it would be like. So we would know and understand that we have a hope, an assurance, and a calling, and a desire to get on with the rest of life. Because life doesn't end at death. Oh, death, where is thy sting? Oh, grave, swallowed up in victory, for God has removed the sting of death. And he has given us eternal life. He has given us a promise of ages to ages life that will always be a revelation of himself. 
that will always reveal how much God loves you. I don't know. I think I kind of like sticking around with that kind of God instead of trying to be my own God. Wouldn't you?